This Week in IT, Microsoft announced the public preview of the new Microsoft Entra PowerShell module, helping organizations still using the old Azure AD PowerShell commandlets. Windows 11 versions 21H2 and 22H2 are both being retired on October the 8th this year. And Microsoft 365 apps are getting support for the open document format version 1.4. So stay tuned for all the latest news. Welcome to This Week in IT, the show where I discuss everything connected to Azure, Microsoft 365 and Windows. But before I get started, I've got a quick favour to ask you. 75% of all the people who watched last week's video weren't subscribed to the channel. Now, as we go live today, we're on about 7,020 subscribers, and I'd really love it if we could push that up to about 7,100 this week. So if you'd like to help us meet our goal, then please subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit the bell notification to make sure you don't miss out on all the latest episodes. PowerShell, well, it's just one of those things that you kind of love to hate. When it was first introduced into Windows, it was really a revolutionary command shell for the platform, which didn't really have anything that could compare to what existed in the Linux and Unix world, for instance. But while it's really powerful, it's also a little bit difficult to use, in my opinion, hard to get started with it. And Microsoft are adding to the confusion this week with the announcement of a new PowerShell module for Microsoft Entra. Now, if you remember back to June 2020, Microsoft announced that they were basically doing away with the Azure Graph and the old Azure AD PowerShell module, and that everybody should move to using the Microsoft Graph PowerShell SDK going forwards. And that hasn't changed. That is still the case. If you're learning PowerShell today for Microsoft 365 or the Azure platform, and you want to administer just using the commandlets, or you want to create scripts, for instance, what you should be doing is downloading the Microsoft Graph PowerShell SDK and using that for everything. But of course, there are still organizations using the old Azure AD modules, all of those commandlets that go with it, of course, and that is going to cause them a bit of a problem going forwards. So this new Entra PowerShell module is designed to help ease the migration for them. So why are we talking about this right now? Well, because Microsoft announced that the Azure AD module is being deprecated from March the 30th, this year. And while it will continue to function, it will only be for one year. So they're going to guarantee functionality through to March 30th, 2025. So the new Microsoft Entra PowerShell module, which has just been announced, is designed to really allow those scripts running with the Azure AD module to carry on running past that point only with slight modifications to the script. You should better take the script. It might work. You might need to make some minor changes, but you don't have to rewrite that script from scratch. And essentially the new module, as I understand, uses an alias to translate those old Azure AD commandlet names to the new Entra commandlets. And Microsoft is saying that in the future, the new Entra PowerShell module will bring features for entitlement management, privileged identity management, and more. But essentially, if you're using the Microsoft Graph PowerShell SDK, you don't need to do anything. That's what you should be using. And this is not for you. This module is just for those that are still using the old Azure AD PowerShell module and need a bit more time to migrate to the Microsoft Graph. So despite some of the drawbacks that PowerShell might have, we do know that it's really popular and that lots of people are interested in it. Let me know what you think in the comments below about managing Microsoft 365 and Azure with PowerShell. Is it too complicated or do you think that Microsoft has done a good job? I'd love to know what you think. Microsoft announced there's ending support for Windows 11 versions 21 H2 and 22 H2 on October the 8th this year. So what do you need to know? Well, if you're an organization, you need to prepare for updating. If you haven't 
you know, subscribe to some kind of uh, agreement with Microsoft that's going to provide you with extended security updates for those versions of Windows, then you need to prepare to upgrade. Now, there won't be any forced upgrading if it's a managed device, but if it's a non-managed device, a consumer device, then Microsoft is going to essentially force upgrades to the latest version of Windows to make sure those devices continue to get security updates. But you don't need to worry about forced upgrades if you're in an organization, but you do need to start planning if you haven't already for the fact that those versions are coming to uh, end of their life very soon. If you're in the current channel for Microsoft 365 applications in your organization, you now have support for the Open Document Format version 1.4. And the apps will now save uh, in ODF 1.4, if that's what you choose to do, in that new version 1.4 by default. So this new format version brings some new features like the ability to insert tables within shapes in Word and text rotation within table cells in PowerPoint. So there are various new things coming into ODF if you use it in your organization. If you found this video useful, I'd really appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up because it helps to get the videos seen by more people on YouTube and to grow our channel. I'm going to leave you with another video on the screen now that you might find useful about a fake edition of Windows 11 that was doing the rounds on the internet last week. And there's some really useful information in that video as well about a new optimized architecture for Microsoft Teams running on VDI. So do check that out. But that's it from me for this week and I look forward to seeing you next time.